Good morning, class. Here we are back after a spring break. Did you have a wonderful time? Well, Bob missed you. Yep. And Humphrey did too. Humphrey was feeling left out, so he wanted to hold the sign today. He says, you're awesome. We want to get started off on the right foot today. That means I want you to stop and think about all the fun things you did last week. And you got to go play outside. It was kind of rainy. And maybe you had some good days. Did you see any snow? Oh, I don't care about snow anymore. I want spring flowers. Is your yard all full of flowers and the trees, the leaves are all coming out? But I want you to remember, you're awesome because God made you awesome. That's right. God made you awesome. So get that awesome brain ready. We're going to get started with our work. I'm going to put Humphrey over here. He keeps falling over, and I'm afraid during class, if he's sitting up there as Bob, he's going to go, Bruh. Okay, find your spelling book and your phonics paper. Your reading books, we can talk about that. Your writing paper. We've got all kinds of great things to talk about today. I know you have a phonics test today, but we're going to do another whole video all by itself for that phonics video. But let's start off with spelling. You know, since we've had a long time away, I thought, whoops, the paper is coming out everywhere. We'll put them back in here, Mrs. Craft. I thought it would be fun to do our cards. It gets kind of boring just to do the same old spelling word. Say so, say so. I thought we'd pick a card. Now, remember, I might not be able to do this card. If it's dribbling, you can dribble. If it's using your squeaky voice, use your squeaky voice. Farmer Ted, he has been out in the fields already getting ready for that spring crop. Okay, so I want you to stop and think about what you're supposed to do and participate along with me. Okay, here we go. I'm going to fan them all out. Okay. Somebody tell me when. Okay, when? When's a good one? Okay, when's a good one? Oh, third one? I heard somebody say a third one. Clap a syllable. Remember, we don't clap just a syllable. We clap the whole word. That way we can every letter so we can stay on track. All right, get your clappers ready. Okay, skip the ones we're skipping there covered in orange. Remember, you're going to write your words once. And on Friday, we have our spelling test. Now, if Mommy wants to give you your spelling test, she can. But on Friday, Mrs. Craft will give you one. And even on Thursday, if you think you're good enough and Mommy wants to give you your spelling test, if you get them all right, you don't have to do it on Friday, just like in class. But if you miss one, you can say it for Mommy and spell it. If you miss more than one, you got to take the test again, just like in class. Okay? Are you ready? Let's start with our first word. We're going to clap. I don't know if I can point and clap at the same time. Can you stay on track? I think you can. Are you ready? Here we go. But. B-O-U-G-H-T. But. Cause. C-A-U-S-E. Cause. August. Capital A-U-G-U-S-T. August. Awful. A-W-F-U-L. Awful. Lawn. L-A-W-N, lawn. Aunt, aunt. A-U-N-T, aunt. Mrs. Crap, I was supposed to say aunt. Okay, we're going to choose another one. I'm going to take just the one off the top. <gasps> get your game on. Okay, get ready to dribble. Are you ready? Or strike? It's surely softball season, but nobody's able to play. Unless you have a family big enough to play. Some of you do. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to dribble a ball. Yawned. Y-A-W-N-E-D, yawned. Straw. S-T-R-A-W. Straw. Skip daughter. Skip thoughtful. All right. Applesauce. A-P-P-L-E-S-A-U-C-E. -E, applesauce. Crawl. C-R-A-W-L. Crawl. Okay. Let's take one more. I'm going to close my eyes. Oh, I hope it's not one of those squeaky ones. Let's see what it says. Oh, eek a mouse. It is a squeaky one. Okay. Get that little mouse voice. Okay. I think I heard a noise in our room. I think the mice have taken over since you're gone. Okay, start with number 14. Are you ready? Here we go. But, F-O-U-G-H-T, but, street, capital S-T, period, street, avenue, capital A-V-E, avenue, U-S-A, capital U, period, capital S, period, capital A, period, United States of America. Ooh, one more. Are you ready? Rain. R-E-I-G-N. Rain. To rule. Oh, I'm glad to be back to my regular voice. But I know you boys and girls love doing this. Don't forget, today you're going to do number four on the back. Unscramble those letters to find the words. Okay? You got it? Great. Find your phonics paper. Okay. 
everybody finds your phonics paper? Today is a review day because you have your phonics test. So it's going to go kind of fast. We're going to do some together so you don't have very much to do on the front. I do want you to do that coloring on the back. That's going to remind you of your rules and your special sounds. We usually do our practice of our special sounds, but we're going to do that before our, our phonics test day. We're going to do a quick review because it's been a whole week that you've not been thinking about school things, okay? At the top of your paper on Lesson 134, there's a bone. Let's see what the bone says, okay? Are you ready? It's right up here at the top. Right here. You read out loud with me, okay? A common noun names a person, place, or thing. We remember that. A proper noun names a particular person, place, or thing and begins with a capital letter. Okay, one more time. A common noun names a person, a girl, a boy, a place, store, park, a thing, a shoe, egg, pencil, so those are just all regular things. Now, if we start at the beginning of a sentence, then we need to put a capital. But otherwise, these words do not get a capital letter. Okay, let's go to our proper nouns. Your name is a proper noun. Caleb, Layla, um, Kendall, Madison, Quinn, Lucas. Oh, I could go all through everybody. It's a proper noun. So let's say this together. Are you ready? A proper noun names a particular person. This is craft. A particular place, Walmart, Taco Bell, a particular thing, April, Tuesday. And it always begins with a capital. Always begins with a capital. Can you remember that? We're going to practice some of it right here. I'm going to do four with you. You can choose different answers, but then you're going to have four more to write on your own. That's pretty easy. We're doing half. Half freebies. Are you ready? Okay, Layla. Can you tell me the name of a city? Maybe you want to tell me the city you live in, Layla. Where do you live? Bob, I'm going to move you over here. Bob's moving for a moment. Say goodbye, Bob, for a second. This is April Falls. Okay, Layla, where do you live? That's right, Coshocton. So let's write Coshocton. Capital C. S H O C T O N. Coshocton. Now that's kind of silly, right? Because I was reaching very far. But you might think of a different. Maybe you live in West Lafayette, like Mrs. Craft or Fresno. Or let's see, maybe you want to say New York City. That's right. Maybe someplace you like to go on vacation. Okay? Let's go to people. Okay, now you think of another one for cities all by yourself after we get done today. Okay? Or you can pause and you can do it right now while it's fresh in your mind. People. Okay, what are some people that would have a capital? You said yes. Name one of your friends, okay? We can name all kinds of friends. I'm going to put down Helen. And you put down something else, okay? Maybe you want to pick two of your friends. Maybe you want to pick a sister or a brother's name. Hit that pause if you want to do it. Kellen, I hope you're having a good day. Hope I'm not being too silly. Are you smiling? I hope so. Okay, months. What month is today? Today we're in the month of April. That's right. You can put down any of the other 11 months, January, February, March, all the way to December. Maybe you want to put down the month days, your birthday, your special month. Okay, now what about days? What day of the week is today? Today is Monday, so I'm going to write Monday, but you have six others to choose from. Remember, every one of those began with a capital letter. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Not a problem in the world. Um, I think I'm going to keep my blue pen so you can see it a little bit, a little bit better. Okay. Now remember, common nouns always lowercase unless at the beginning of a sentence, and proper nouns always begin with a capital letter. You got this. Okay. Let's go to our next thing. Our next thing on the page says to form. We're on the remember bone down here in the middle. Okay. To form the plural of a word ending in a consonant and a Y, change the Y to an I and add ES. We have done this so many times, but to help you out today, I thought we would do this together. Would you like a lot of freebies today? I think so, because you've got a test to take and you have the back of this paper to do today. We're going to count this back of this paper as part of your grade. So do your very best coloring, your very best work today. Okay, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Let's see. Ooh, let's pick somebody to help me. Let's read these four words all together. Everybody read with me. Country, family, key, 
and foot. We're going, yes, that's right, we're going vertical today. Okay, hunter, country. How am I going to spell country? Can you write it down before hunter, hunter can tell me? Okay, hunter, you ready? I hear you. Okay, you spell it out loud for me, hunter. Let me see. I'm listening. Okay, you said C O U mm -hmm. N T R. Okay, hunter, be careful on this one. That's right. You said I E S. I cannot fool Hunter for anything. Did you get countries? Did you beat Hunter? Okay, good job. If you need to stop the video, stop and pause so that you can get this word written down. Okay, let's go to family. Roman. Are you ready, Roman? Okay. Are you ready? Okay, Roman's gonna spell family. Okay, hunt, let's go. Let's hear you. Okay, Roman, spell for me. F A M I, uh-huh, L, that's right, it has that Y, I'm going to change it to an I, and add a yes. I cannot trick these boys, they are so smart. Very good. Now, did you remember what the rule was, too? This word has a consonant in front of the Y, this word has a consonant. Does key have a consonant? Madison, it's your turn. Okay, Madison, are you ready? Don't get tricked. Show the boys the girls are smart. Okay, how am I going to write keys? Keys. Okay, Madison, ready? K. Mm -hmm. E. There's that vowel. Do I need to change it to a Y to the I? I heard you say no. Good job, Madison. I am just going to put an S. If I put ES at the end, Kias, mom says, go get the car, Kias. What? Mom said, go get the car, Keys. Madison, you are awesome. Okay, let's go to another girl. Two for the boys. Let's see if we can get two points for the girls. Okay, Layla, are you ready? Layla, oh, I'm putting it down. Layla, how do we write foot? Foot. The plural of foot. She's giggling. I can already hear her. Okay, spell it for me, Layla. Are you ready? Here we go. F. Did you say that? I thought I heard that. E. Uh-huh. E. T. That's right. We do not have foots. We have feet. Two to two is the score. Two for the boys. Two for the girls. Good job. Okay, are you ready? We're going to go down the other side. Let me get my new board. Okay, should the girls go first? Or? Let's do boy, girl, boy, girl. Let's do it. Okay, let's go to Caleb. Let's all read the words first. Okay, Caleb, you be thinking while we're reading. Okay, everybody read with me. Mouse, tray, uh -oh, blueberry. Mm, I can eat some blueberries right now. And boy. Okay, so mouse. Caleb, what is the plural of mouse? Can you spell it for me? Be careful. It's one of those tricky ones. Okay. Yes, I have not found any. Oh, I can't tell you. What? Okay. Caleb, you spell for me. M. I heard you. I. He did not forget. C. Uh -huh, and E. Good job. He wrote the word mice. Mouse turns into mice. I will do not want to say mouses. I have six mouses in my basement. Huh? I do not want any mouses in my basement. Guess what? I have found no mice in my traps. Good job, Caleb. Boys have another point. Okay, girls, let's go to Adeline. Adeline, how am I going to write trays? Mm. Hey, Adeline, you see there's a clue. What comes in front of that Y? Is it a vowel or is it a consonant? That's right, it's a vowel. So when there's a vowel, do we change the Y to an I? Okay, you spell for me, Adeline. Are you ready? All right, here we go. T, uh -huh. R, good job so far. A, what's the next one going to be? Hey, good job. Y, and on the end, S, good job. We don't want to change the Y to an I, and we don't want to put ES. Treyas? Mom said carry these treyas to the back porch. That's crazy. Trays to the back porch. That's right. Okay, boys, this is your final one. It's worth double the points. Okay, Calvin, it is your turn. How are we going to spell blueberry? Blueberry is a very big word. Are you ready, Calvin? Okay, you spell for me. I'm listening. B uh -huh. L U E uh -huh. B. Boy, this is a big one. I hope it can stay on my line. E. Good job so far. 
R, R. Uh oh, I'm running out of room. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna erase real fast. Hold on, everybody. Mrs. Craft room too big. Okay, I'm gonna go shrinky dink, shrinky dink real fast. Okay, Calvin, I'm catching up with you. B L U E B E R R. What comes after the R? That's right. It has a Y. I have to change the Y to an I. Calvin knew that. And add E S. Woo! That word just fit on my line. Blueberries. Boys have double the place. Okay, girls. I know the words boy. I think you can do this. Let's go to Ella. Ella. How am I going to write boy? She's laughing already. I can hear you. She's going, Mrs. Craft. You are so silly. That is so easy. Okay, this is for double the points. And it would it'd be a tie game. I almost said for the championship of the world, but it's going to be a tie game. We'll have to see who can break that tie later. Are you ready? Okay, Ella, spell boy for it. Boy. Oh, okay, go ahead. B O. Uh huh. Good job. Boys, I'm not going to tell you what you said. Do you think she got it right? I think so. Are you right? B O Y S. Good job. I do not want to put this. Does this look right? Boyas? I have 12 boyas in my class. I have no clue what that is. That's right. That is wrong. Make sure you're always thinking carefully about that vowel or the consonant before the Y. Good job, boys and girls. I am so proud of you. Okay, last thing on this paper. I'm going to give you a sample. You cannot copy my sample. You have to come up with your own creative sentence. But it asks us to write an imperative sentence that uses a proper noun. Remember, a proper noun is a person's name or a place or um, a particular thing. Okay, like the Shopton. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll show you mine, and then we can maybe think of some other ones. An imperative is a command. Mr. Kraft, go wash your hands with soap and water. That's right. Mr. Kraft is my proper noun. He's a particular person. Maybe you want to use Kishokton. Let's see. Kishokton residents must put their trash out on Tuesdays. Okay. Is that a particular place? It is. Okay, or you can use plural nouns. All boys must clean their room. Uh oh, what was my plural noun? Boys. Okay, a command was all boys must clean their room. Girls, your room's already clean, isn't it? Good job. Okay, you've got that front almost done. You only have the command to do on the bottom and four words on the top. And maybe you already got the four words done because you paused. Great job. Okay, on the back of your paper, this is for extra bonus points for phonics which will help because we're going to do our phonics test on video which is going to be kind of really different. I want to give you an advantage that you can do some nice coloring and this is really easy just follow the key. Read the words carefully. It says words with a ah, color green, words with a ah, color blue, and words with I color yellow. That's a fun picture to color. Color neatly and you have your crayon boxes so you should do your best job on this. Okay? I am so proud of you. We're going to move on and talk about our reading today. In reading today, you're going to talk, Mrs. Craft's book is big, of course, about puppies. Who has a puppy at their house? Mrs. Craft doesn't. Our neighbors used to have ten dogs, but they're only down to four dogs now. Puppies. And it tells all kinds of things about their habitat. habitat. That's where they live, their physical characteristics, what they eat, and interesting facts. You're going to read carefully with mommy or daddy or whoever your helper is, grandma, grandpa. Okay? You're going to take turns reading. They are not going to read this whole story to you. You have to do some of the reading. But let's do the words to watch for at the top. Are you ready? Do you have your book? Open it up to page number nine. Page number nine. While you're finding your page, I'm going to read you a little bit about our story. Would you like to have a dog? Dogs are big responsibility. There are many things that a master must do in order to train a nice dog. Let's read to find out how we can be a good master in order to have a nice pet. You might learn something new about how to train your dog from this story. Let's read our words to watch for at the top. Are you ready? Read with me. Let's go horizontal. You ready? Delight, frightened, stomach, and loyal means faithful. You're going to read 
page 8, or page 9, 10, 11, 12. How are we reading to today, Mrs. Craft? Oh, all the way to 15. It is the longest of our reading spans. But on page 14, you have some questions to answer. Mrs. Craft is pretty sure the answers. There's questions to answer. And on this page, it's just a nice picture of puppies and, and little girls. Okay? Oh, little boys. Sorry, I thought it was a little girl. Little boys. So really, there's not much reading there. So answer those questions. Circle them right in the book. Write what you need to do. Okay? Everybody good for reading? I think so. Okay, we are just marching right along. Well, last week, well, really the week before that, when we were talking about our writing, we should have been talking about how to write a letter. In fact, one of your papers had a letter that you could fill in some of the information. Do you remember that? Right here, this page right here. Maybe some of you did this little letter, okay? But on the back, it told us all about the parts of a letter, okay? Let's go over those four parts because they're going to come up again in some of our writing assignments. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to read. You follow along, okay? It says a letter has four parts. Now, this page was actually last week's page. So don't worry if you don't have it in front of you because I'm going to show you on little cards exactly what it says, okay? I just wanted to refer to it because mommy probably thought, why did Mrs. Craft never talk about this? Okay, the first thing we talk about is a greeting. That's who we're writing our letter to. Dear Grandma, dear Brady, dear Benjamin, dear Calvin, dear Quinn. Oh, Quinn's moving to that new house, remember? We might have to write her some letters. That's right. So that's who we're writing our letter to. So it's called the greeting. The next part is called the body. The body is the letter itself. Like if I was writing a letter to, um, I was writing a letter to Graham, my, my grandson. I just sent him a box for Easter. And I could say, dear Graham, that would be my greeting. Dear Graham, how are you today? Lulu misses you so much. I sent you a stuffed lamb that sings, Jesus loves me. I hope you like your little toy. Did you and mommy get the sweet treats I packed inside your box? I can't wait to see you. Okay, did you see her, my body? That's the story that I'm writing to Graham. Okay, so body tells the letter itself. At the end would be the closing. It would be the your friend or love. Like in my case, I would put love on Graham's letter. But on your friend, you might want to put your friend or sincerely. Okay? And then the last thing Mrs. Craft even showed you on here is the signature. The signature is the name of the writer. If I was writing that letter to Graham on the board for you to see, I would sign, Love, Lulu. He's going to call me Lulu. Isn't that kind of silly? Maybe it's our special name, okay? So maybe you have a special name for your grandma and grandpa. I know some people do. I think Kendall has a poppy, I think, right? Maybe I heard a Nana. Is that Cowan's grandma? I think I've heard Par from Hunter. All kinds of special names. That's right. So where that special name goes is down here. If they were writing the letter to you, okay, sign the letter like Mrs. Craft was to Graham. So our four parts again are the greeting, the body, the closing, and the signature. Those will come up again. So just so you know, just a reminder, you need to do three writing papers every week. Now, that includes one is a test. Okay, you'll always have a test. Then you pick two other writing papers. I don't care what two they are. You decide because you're going to do your very neatest. This is part of your writing grade. Today, if you choose to do today's, it is on the back of last week's. Remember the paper where you wrote the names? Okay. Today, you're going to write a story about a kite. Yesterday, your kite would have surely been up in a tree as windy as it was. Listen to what it says. Write a story about what it would be, what it would be like to be a kite. Not you flying a kite. You are the kite. Tell what you would do. Would you fly high? Would you do loop-de-loops? Would you school soar down? Would you go and talk to the birds? Okay. Where would you fly? In your backyard? In your sky? Over a big city like New York City? What would you see? Little tiny people because you're up so high. Uh, trees, birds. What would you see? Buildings? Okay. Use describing words. Did you hear any words that Mrs. Crown said? Tall buildings. Little bird, okay? Um, little people, okay? Green trees. Make sure you use describing words. Skip lines. 
I want at least four to five sentences and do your very best writing in cursive. Don't print. Some people are forgetting in printing. Do cursive. This is a cursive paper. This is your choice today. So you find and look through those papers for the week and pick out the three that you want to do. One is a test and the other two would be your choices. Okay. Last thing to talk about this morning. Um, yeah, because we don't have health today because we had reading is our reading worksheet. Remember for reading worksheets, you're going to pick two of those. Two reading worksheets. Mrs. Crump keeps looking over at my notes. There's so many things to remember. Today, it's about the gold ribbon winner. This is the end of our story about Marta. Next time we are working on these kind of worksheets, we're starting a whole new one, okay? So this is about Marta. Be carefully. Don't forget, on the back, you have questions to answer. Do your very best. If you don't know, go back and read the story again. Or look at the paragraph. It'll tell you. Maybe, nope, on this one it doesn't have any paragraphs. So this one you just have to know. A good question that was asked to Mrs. Kraft was, I don't understand this question. Like on this one today, it's a number two. What makes you think that Marta did not know about the gold ribbon? Now, this is not an answer you're going to find in your story. This is an answer that you create yourself. It says, what do you think? This is an opinion. It's not a fact. This is your choice of an answer. Now, if it doesn't have wording like that, don't give me your opinion. I want facts. Like it says, why did the crowd pick Nikki to win? I know why, but I can't tell you. Okay? But when it says, what do you think, you get to create the answer yourself. Boys and girls, I hope you had fun today going over our work. It's kind of fast. Slow it down by using that pause button. And remember to have Mommy look up on another whole new video about our phonics test. Okay? I, I can't wait to talk to you later about math. So we have math and phonics to talk about. No health today. And don't forget, tomorrow is a pick-up and drop-off day. It is not a required one for Mrs. Craft. But I am going to have dry whiteboards downstairs for you. I thought about bringing our stacking cups so we could do some games with those. So you might find a stack of styrofoam cups. Don't use them to drink out or to paint, put paint water in. Use these for math time when we're together. Okay? And what else? Can you think of anything else? I don't know. I'll think of something else and tell you more later. But tomorrow is optional. The following Tuesday on the 28th, you have to bring your new things. And by then, maybe we'll know whether we're back together. I am praying that we're back together. I miss you all so much. I just get so excited when we have videos and we talk to each other. I just can't wait. Okay, so do your best job. Write neatly. Think carefully. And Bob says, I'm going to grab him. Bob says, adios, amigos. Oh, that's Taco Tuesday, Bob. We're only on Monday. Okay, bye. See you later.